Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood. Hopefully, between myself and Hien, we have brought back the bigger bounty. Let's hope so. Well, about that, because uh, I have eight bodies on my hand. Okay, I think this is more than enough meat, even for one, that it shouldn't fit in Gosetsu's hands like that, but... Ugh, gameplay animations. Um, okay. I'm just glad I'm being fed. And with a feast, no less. I would have found it funnier if we had, like, dragged the carcasses behind us. That would be more amusing. You know, played up a bit for comedic effect for a friendly contest, you know? I mean, you saw the size of those things. I killed- we killed 14! between the two of us, okay? That is enough to like feed like everybody in this tribe like three times over. That's a lot of food, you guys. Well, at least she's lampshading on the fact that, you know, we slaughtered quite a few of them. Where is Lise? Is she even around here? Well, Serena told her to talk to some dude. I don't remember his name. Was it this guy? Something similar to that. I don't know. She may not be, she may not be loaded at this time. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I was just over there, and he told me to go away, because he was busy. <laughs> Silly game. Hi, remember me? Fuel for the fire, okay. Um, well, it's a shame I was not in on any of those lessons, uh, that Estinian had with Alphano about how to collect firewood. Would be interesting if we had a little joke reference humor about that, but... Then again, this is an entirely different environment, and not really many trees around here. Just heavy grasslands, and a lot of bushes. But clearly you guys get lumber from somewhere. I mean, these are some quite nice bridge logs here. Um, yeah, he did. Um...
Yeah, I wanna go talk to the children. Children! Are they even here? I'm gonna go take a quick look. But, um, yeah. I, I like how Lee's kinda just dances around it. Yeah, we're picking up poop. Yeah. And the main reason I'm not drawing a, a total line at this is, number one, I already know in real life that things like cow chips can indeed be used to fuel a fire. And considering I just mentioned that, well, this place isn't really... Well, flourishing in trees, where the hell are you gonna get your lumber from, you know? So, in the absence of that, you gotta do something else to fuel your fires. And considering that there's deadly monsters all over the step, poop is not in short supply, so... Yeah. Normally, as an adventure, I would draw the line at literally picking up shit, but... It's not like it's somebody who's asking us to, you know, clean out their stables because they're too lazy looking at you, Dragon Quest Nine. <sighs> but here, there's actually, you know, a fundamental and utilitarian, utilitarian purpose to this task, and it is going to fuel the feast that is going to be made for us. So, I think this is okay. And... I honestly think, as, as absurd as it is, that yes, I've been reduced to picking up poop right now. Um, it's an interesting way to kind of introduce, you know, differing styles and, and differing customs. Um, while also being pretty darn accurate. So, uh, I know I said at the beginning of this place, there's a lot of things I'm going to complain about the narrative of this place, but... There are a lot of there. There are some good things about it too, and this is kind. This is a bit one of them. Um, I'm actually pretty fond of the Mall Tribe, uh, in and of themselves, and what they do, and how how they get along with stuff. It's it's mostly the direction some of the narrative is going to take later that I'm not happy with at all. But like I said, even. Even so, there are some, there are places where even I will not deny, you know, things, things are pretty good and I can actually appreciate them for what they are. At the very least though, you know, I gathered the meat before I started picking up the poop because, uh, contamination and all that and I don't see any sinks around here. I spear fishing in the background there. That's kind of cool. I love the description. It is what it is. <laughs> it's just poop. Question is, where are we putting this? I hope there's like a wheelbarrow or something. So yeah, the mall are a nomadic tribe. Uh, so, circle of life. Okay, understood. Well, it seems the children have grown fond of him, so that's kind of sweet.
So I rather like this scene over here because it forces Lise to actually, you know, think about what she's doing and why um, she's doing some things. And now she has to explain to a, the children of a nomadic tribe what it means to stay in place for, for long periods of time and why we hold such things of importance when to them it's the opposite. You know, Leslie said, like, we have livestock and stuff to feed, you know, where the grass goes, we go. Like, is it not harder to stay in one place because, you know, you eventually do run out of resources and things like that. So, and, and I, I really like how they use the children to frame this because there's so much more genuine innocence involved in in all of this discussion it it kind of kind of relates to the you know like explain like I'm five sort sort of idea that if you can't really explain something to be understood by a five-year-old do you really understand what the heck you're talking about and while things are a bit more complicated than that level of simplicity in real life. Um, it's just it's just a very interesting take on both educating the children about you know like they 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 don't understand why he and wants to leave and for Lise, she doesn't quite really understand you know the whole idea of a nomadic culture so. It's it's a really gentle way to get across, you know, the the two different differing uh, lifestyles, and how both of them are equally valid, and you know, it it comes down to well, how do you describe what a home is, and essentially it comes down to you know the people that you're with, but but for some the people that you know you're with because you know they stay in the same place for a long time that that place becomes you know a part of your family and and your legacy and stuff like that it's just a really sweet scene overall let's just put it that way Oh, she tired. She needed the rest to come so far and carry so much. Hien and his friend, too. Strange that they should vanish so soon. Huh. Huh. Well, they can't have gone far. <laughs> Guys, it's the middle of the night. Not troubled by our old wounds, I see. <laughs> no, you by yours. I know I should have fled with the others after father died, instead of blindly fighting on. It was reckless and foolish, and there was naught to be gained from it. Everything to lose, rather. We know no path save the one we walk. I myself am in no hurry to meet those who have gone before. Not while I have still to make amends. Well said. <laughs> Your
You are none the worse for your time in the wilderness. On the contrary, I would say you have improved. Come now, your victories still far exceed mine. Or have you forgotten all the times you trounced me as a boy? Well, he does have a couple of decades of experience on you, he, and don't be so hard on yourself. I feared I would not see you again. A life so fortuitously saved should be spent wisely. Without regret would I have traded it for our people's amnesty had it been their will. Instead they have called for the sword, and so that is what I must be. Until this blade is broken, I can but carve a path forward. Were you truly so concerned for my well-being? You never showed it when I used to spar. Well, usually people are on their deathbeds when they do that. How you cried when you lost, and when your mother tried to comfort you, and when you inevitably came at me once more, swinging your wooden sword wildly. Mina's little Master Shun. What a fine young man you've become. A man should not be addressed by his childhood name. I've told you about that before. Gosatsu? You respect the name, okay? He told you no, he means no. That goes for everybody. Ah, the mask slips. And I was so close to cultivating a winning persona. Yeah, hi guys, sorry I beat you off on your conversation here. There will be opportunity enough for putting on airs after you have returned in triumph to Doma. Now is the time to show our true character. Yeah, no, no, we're gonna respect the name, okay? You don't wish to be called by his childhood name, we don't do that. Quite right. Which makes me think you should join us next time. I dare say you have a secret or two of your own to share. Oh, you should see my resume. There we, we get a bit of uh, exposition on the relationship between Hien and Gosetsu, which I certainly do appreciate. Um, none of it really relates to the plot as a whole, but it's one of those character bits that I've always felt th that the game's narrative has been severely lacking at a bunch of points. And I complained about this a lot in Heaven's Word too, how much wasted potential there is between character bits and you don't even have to really have them do anything just have them either sit down or have a conversation or you can you can do it with with just expressions you know and of course here they use a sparring match as you know a framework for it which given their relationship with each other is is entirely appropriate especially when they they talk about having such matches in the past you know it it in so few words it it imparts to you how much of a deep bond they have shared you know This better. Um, just barely. 
We'll put that on and we'll fix that on just shortly. Okay, so even though we have been given permission to buy them all to, you know, be, well, at least honorary or temporary members of their tribe, that's still not enough to compete in the Nautum. Okay. Oh, landmarks is directions. You are awesome, Serena. Oh, great. So apparently the tribes don't seem content with, well, at least not all of them, content with going in with their own. And will extort others to do their dirty work for them so they can win. How appropriate they be called warriors because they treat this as war. One foot in front of the other. Why am I singing? I have no idea. Oh, what did you forget? Okay, but who makes these whistles? Can you like buy them at the local store or do you have a ritual for, you know, by which your gods have, you know, suggested you make them? Hi. Well, they ain't gonna get far without these whistles, so there's that. So, yeah, in order to, to actually compete in the Nodum, we need to be proven as warriors of the steppe. And this car is still here. And I find it kind of hilarious that, of all places, they're parked right where Lisa is. That is one heck of a landmark right there, let me tell you. Oh, great, so we gotta keep a lookout. We're being watched, apparently. But anyway, yeah, it seems that you just can't, you know, align yourself with the tribe and be like, hey, 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 I'm gonna compete in the Nada. Nope, apparently you gotta go through sacred ritual and stuff like that and get yourself a fancy Yule, which I'm just gonna spoil it right now. It's, it's a giant bird of prey, okay? I, I wish the game kind of told you that in the beginning. That, you know, okay, you gotta tame one of these things and oh yeah, here's the whistles to do so. And nobody thinks to question, what the heck is a y'all? You know? How, how do we know what we're taming and all? So, so I'm just going to presume that that knowledge is just intrinsically implied to have been stated to us. In, in the meanwhile, and it's understood. So it's, it's one of those things, it's not important enough to waste a line of dialogue on, but it's just a minor nitpick I have.
Okay, well, uh, those people of those two tribes, one of which I haven't seen before, are uh, now dead themselves. Could I not turn the tables and enslave them myself? I mean, I'm not that kind of person, but technically could I? Okay, I was gonna say, I'm like, that- that outfit just bellowing in the wind from this direction looks just really odd. <laughs> If there are any more you lying about, let us know. The four of us are not going to take a crap lying down. Okay, thanks. So yeah, we didn't um, just knock those guys unconscious. We uh, killed them. Uh, considering how much killing goes on and slaving goes on in this step, uh, how are there so many adults just floating around? How often do you people reproduce? Again. <sighs> if you guys are gluttons for punishment, I am more than happy to oblige you. But I have to say, I do find it interesting that they do have, um, healers and stuff among them. They're, they're not just all, um, well, offensive, I guess. Like we, you know, we, we do see some guys with axes. We see people who, you know, that, that you can be a capable warrior and not be, you know, badass with giant weapons kind of thing. So I, I do appreciate that kind of touch. Will you smelly people please leave me alone? Even if he kidnapped me, I haven't passed a trial yet, so... Not really of use to you, am I? Lisa's over here doing squats, apparently. I love how the entrance is closed off by nothing more than ordinary ropes. <laughs> yeah, there's a pretty big gaps in these in these ropes here, and I'm pretty sure I can just, you know, walk right past them. Um, do- can- can we give him the whistles? No? Um, okay. Yeah, see, see, okay, so it is explicitly stated that we are aware that the Yoles are large birds. So, yeah. So apparently we learned that somewhere. I mean, he might have learned that before we met up with him, but, uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, technically I didn't spoil anything. They tell you about right what it is. So yeah, we, we're just going to assume that they told that to us 
off screen. I mean, it's not important if it was a bear or a bird, an elephant or whatever. That that part doesn't actually matter. But next time, we will actually take upon Bardem's medal and see if we cannot prove ourselves official warriors of the steppe. So thank you for watching, friends, and I shall see you next time.